I believe I have posted this story before on one of my old accounts of which I have lost the password for and gotten locked out of. I posted the story on Let's Not Meet, but I figured it would be more suitable for this sub since I don't believe I was actually in danger. I also want to preface with hoping I don't sound like I'm turning my back on a stranger's kindness. However, I just want to say the whole vibe just felt off. This happened a few years ago, around 2014. I was about 19 years old, and I was dating a guy who lived in southern Illinois while I lived up north in the city. He was originally from where I grew up, but his family moved down south to be closer to his mom's parents. Usually he would come up to visit me, but on this occasion, I decided to go down to visit him and have a neat little adventure on my own. I got up to get ready and get on the train hella early, and around 9am, we were off on our journey. It was a pretty empty train, but I did take notice of the man, maybe late 30s, sitting across from me in one seat back. He looked exactly like Tom Hanks in Forrest Gump, he even had the accent. It was going to be a pretty long train ride, and I was tired from being up so early that I ended up drifting off. I awoke, I don't know how long later, to a pair of hands reaching over me and draping a blanket on me. I sat up confused and looked around, and found the Forrest Gump guy staring at me and smiling. In lieu of a thank you, I just kind of settled back into my chair with the strange blanket and tried to tell myself that he was just being nice. Being a young girl alone, you're always warned to be wary of strangers. I've also always looked very young for my age, so it isn't uncommon for strangers to think that I was a little too young to be out and about on my own. Still, I wasn't expecting to interact with anyone. It was one of those conflicting, thank you for your kindness, but please go away type feelings. Regardless, I drifted off again, and I woke up this time to a pair of hands stretching over me, holding a cup of hot chocolate. This was the first time we spoke. In his Forrest Gump accent, he goes, here you go, it's hot chocolate, I can't drink two. He then held up the one he got for himself. This also struck me as odd, because I thought, then why buy two? I simply thanked him. Another thing, as a young girl, we are taught to never accept drinks from strangers. I had no idea where this hot chocolate had even been before hovering over my asleep train corpse, so there was no way I was drinking it. I decided to just fake sip to be polite. Here's where it gets weird. Now, I might just be being paranoid, but as I started drinking the hot chocolate, this man starts staring at me. He is watching me drink this hot chocolate with the scrutiny of a food critic. I swear to you, he almost looked puzzled. In my anxiety-filled head, I'm thinking this dude is wondering why I'm not passing out. The drink is roofied, it's poison. Any scenario I could come up with in my brain, I did. After about 20 minutes of staring at me, he then gets up to come sit right next to me. He starts asking me questions. What's my name? Where do I live? Have I ever been to Southern Illinois before? Am I by myself? So I lied. I lied through my teeth. I gave him a fake name and a fake ass backstory. He then told me his name, which I can't remember now, and that he was getting off at the very last stop. He was going to disappear, his words, to work on a barge going up and down the Mississippi for six months. He also used the words off the grid. Decent serial killer job if you ask me. Luckily for me, we pulled up to my stop about 30 minutes later. I was like, well, love to stay and chat, but this is me, and I bounced. Like I said, he could have just been a very nice, albeit very socially awkward guy. He could have just seen a young girl on the train and felt like looking out for her. However, my gut felt super uneasy, and, as I said, the vibe felt super off. You never know, we might see the Forrest Gump killer in the news someday, so I did everything I could not to wake up covered in plastic on this guy's barge. Or maybe he's just out there buying nice girls hot chocolate. I was probably about 20, and I was babysitting for some decently wealthy people who happened to be good friends of mine. I was on the main floor, 
and there was one little boy upstairs in bed, and four older boys, eight and nine, downstairs playing video games. It was probably close to 11 p.m., and there was a knock at the door. I can see it's a big guy in a red sweatshirt. I slowly crawl to the kitchen and grab the biggest knife I can find and go stand at the wall by the door where the man cannot see me, but would have to walk past me to come in. I call the homeowner because they have that ring doorbell, and this was when it was very new and few people had it, so she can talk to the man through her phone. So she says, I'll call you right back after I talk to him, and hangs up. Meanwhile, the guy is knocking aggressively now, and I'm praying that none of the kids hear, as I don't want them to come downstairs or upstairs and scare them. My phone rings, and she says that she talked to him, and he said he was with Uber, not popular in this area at this time, looking for Angela, which ironically happens to be the homeowner slash my friend's name. But the last name was something weird. She said she told him he had the wrong address and to be on his way. However, he was still at the door. She stays on the phone with me until he walks away, which was several minutes later. We hang up as she thinks it was an honest misunderstanding. Meanwhile, I have this terrible, awful feeling in my gut, so I go to the door to watch for his headlights to leave. Their house is at the end of a dead-end road. I never saw his headlights leave, nor did I ever see a car. I laid on the couch staring at the door until daylight at 7 a.m. when I finally fell asleep, only to be awoken by the kids at 8 a.m. The whole time this big man was standing at the door, all I could think to myself was, I'm 20 years old, 100 pounds, and 5 foot 3 and female. You have to kill him. If he comes through that door, you have to give it your everything and kill him. You have to protect these five little boys. You have to stab him and don't stop. It's honestly a scary way to think, but the motherly instinct in me was telling me that I have to save these kids at all costs. Thankfully, he never came back that night, and I didn't have to test my strength. So I work in a store in the mall in a fairly nice area. I work right by the main doorway, which people come in and out of all day, and people hang out in the vestibule, area between the outside inside doors, waiting for the bus to come. I usually work alone, at night, lock up, leave through the same area, walk to my car, and go home. Two days ago, I ended up working a morning shift and get to leave at 4pm, yay, while it's still light out. Mind you, I'm a 22 year old, slim, blonde girl and I usually get mistaken for 13. This day, I was wearing a pink sweatshirt and pink leggings with my hair and a ponytail, so I guess I could appear as young, otherwise normal day, so whatever. I'm walking toward the vestibule, and when I push open the first set of doors, I always check if there's someone behind me to see if I should hold the door open for them, because I don't want to be rude. So I see an Asian guy, tan jacket, khakis, casually walking a good distance behind me, and I don't want him to try and hurry up, so I hold the door open with my foot for him to walk through while I check my phone. He walks through the door, grabs my arm, and says, come with me, I know what you stole. He's grabbing my arm pretty hard, and he is pulling me, mind you. There are two women in the opposite side of the vestibule, and a guy standing maybe three feet away and I are making direct eye contact with this guy with a please help me kind of look. The Asian guy continues to say, come with me, and is part way through the door to the outside, and I'm keeping resistance, trying to keep my arm close to my body and pull back. I think I mumbled something like, um, I don't want to. I was so confused and couldn't even comprehend what was happening. I thought for a second, is he joking? Does he think I'm someone he knows and he's messing with me? Is he mentally ill? And I pull back enough that he lets go, and then he casually walks out the door, into his car, and just drives off. Me and the dude that were standing there the whole time are just jaw dropped looking at each other, saying, what the hell was that? Back and forth. He thought the same thing, pretty much. He ended up walking me to my car and telling me that I needed to report it. I gave him a big hug, thanked him, and got into my car. Then I called my mom, and then security, then talked to security, and the police spoke to a detective, the whole nine yards. 
Apparently, this isn't the first time a tall Asian guy was acting weird. A guy, probably the same one, apparently harasses juvenile girls at the mall frequently, and isn't even supposed to be at the mall. Security showed me pictures of an Asian guy that they suspect is him, and also caught the whole thing on camera. He apparently walked in only 15 minutes before this all happened. I'm still kind of in shock. Also, I'm putting in my two weeks notice on Monday. This happened many years ago. I was about 12 years old and went to the mall with my friend, same age, and her sister, one year younger. We were three typical 12 year old girls, jeans and a t-shirt and sneakers. It's one of those city malls that likes to think it's fancier than it is, but it also wasn't super ghetto or anything. We were at one of the back entrances, less well used than the main entrance, just goofing around by the railing that led to the doors. We were playing balance beam on the railings, taking turns standing on it and walking, when this guy comes up to us. He was maybe late 20s, Hispanic or maybe Middle Eastern, I don't really remember too clearly. Like I said, it feels like it was a thousand years ago. He smiles at us and says to me, Hello, I think you're so beautiful. So very beautiful. Would you like to come home with me? And we were just like, Ew, no, thank you. And immediately went inside the mall, where there were lots of people. We just kind of brushed it off, didn't tell our parents, didn't think much of it at the time. But sometimes I do think about it. Would it have turned out differently if I was alone? This happened about an hour ago, and I'm 99% sure that the reason it didn't go any further than it did is because of the amount of time I've spent on this sub and similar ones. Before, I think I'd have been too polite to do what I did, but I've learned from the posts on here to screw politeness. I work as a private carer, so I provide care for customers in their own homes. My job is pretty much going from my car to my customers' homes and back again, so I don't spend a lot of time on the street by myself. My manager is also quite strict about late evening calls and doesn't often let us do them for the exact reason that I'm about to explain. One of my customers lives in a very large block of flats which is gated from the street. There is a large gate for cars and a pedestrian gate next to it, which requires a code to gain access. Only residents are allowed a key fob for the vehicle gate, so us carers have to park a little way up the street, which I did, and use the coded pedestrian one. The call began at 9pm, and I was finished by 10pm. I left my customer's block and walked down towards the gate to get back to my car. As I approached the gates, I noticed a man walking past, wearing a beaten up red backpack. He was already past the gates by the time I exited, but he heard the metal gates slam and turned. We locked eyes, and the moment he did, he quickly changed direction and started heading toward me. Like I said, because of this sub, I'm probably a little paranoid, but alarm bells did start sounding immediately, and I noped it straight away. I turned back around and quickly punched in the coat to the gate, slamming it behind me so that it would lock. I figured if he genuinely lived there or was visiting someone, he would know the code, as you can't even visit someone without it. As I slammed the gate and turned around, he was right there on the other side of the bars. I smiled politely and asked if he was alright, to which he replied, yes, as if it was none of my business. I nodded and turned to walk back to my customer's flat when he asked if I was going to let him in. I said, do you live here? To which he replied, yes, and I said, well you'll know the code then. He then started spinning me some long drawn out story that I couldn't really follow about having not lived there long and forgetting the code. I knew this was bull, because I'd clearly seen him walk merrily past the gate before seeing me. He would at least know where his flat was, and the way he turned the moment he saw me was way too suspicious. I gave him a patronizing smile, and said that I was sorry, but I couldn't let him in if he didn't know the code, and that he would have to call the building manager. 
He would have had the emergency number if he did, in fact, live there. He muttered something incomprehensible and turned to walk off the way he was going in the first place. I headed back to my customer's flat and called my boyfriend, who very helpfully didn't answer the phone. It being late, I didn't want to disturb my customer if I didn't have to, so I figured I'd wait a few minutes and then go back to the gate and see if he was still lurking. If he was, I would have to wait in my customer's home. Fortunately, he was long gone by the time I went back to the gate, but I walked to my car holding my keys between my fingers just in case. I spent 12 years cutting men's hair before switching careers. A big part of why I switched professions was because I was tired of dealing with creepy clients. I have quite a few stories, but this one stands out in particular. It occurred when I had just gotten my cosmetology license and started working in a cool rock and roll themed barbershop by my house at the time. The shop had opened pretty recently, so there were some very long, slow days. I helped out at the front desk and usually sat there with my manager to greet and say goodbye to the customers. One day, there was a dude who had a handlebar mustache that he curled into complete circles on each side. He was getting cut by one of the male barbers, and when he was done, he came up to the front desk to pay. He mumbled something very low while looking at me, so I said, I'm sorry, what did you say? He kept whispering, and I got closer. He whispered, you have very beautiful breasts. Uh, I'm pretty sure my facial expression said it all. He tried to add, and beautiful eyes, but I was over this dude already, and my manager had stepped away. He was just standing there smirking at me so creepily with his eyes glued to my chest. He asked me where the bathroom was, and I pointed to the back. He was in the bathroom for like 30 minutes. When he came out, he handed the receptionist a super slimy $20 bill and stated, that's a very sexy picture you have in your bathroom. There were music posters all over the shop, including the bathroom. It was a poster of Nelly Furtado. He lingered leaving, and I got one of the male barbers to come up. The dude immediately was ready to leave and scurried out the door. There were only women at the desk when he was being peak creepy. Just, it, it makes my skin crawl. This is honestly a tame story out of the many that I have, but I still couldn't believe how creepy he was. So that, my lovely listeners, was six creepy encounter stories from Reddit. I hope that you enjoyed those stories, and I know that this was a bit of a strange video, not having an intro and all. I'm kind of trying out having videos without intros to see if they see if they work. Uh, <laughs> so if you liked that, let me know. If you hated the fact that I didn't have an intro, let me know. Either way, I'm going to do this a couple times and then move on from there. If it works, great. If not, I'll go back to my intros. If you did enjoy the video, please do hit that thumbs up button. Let me know that you liked it. Also, if you really enjoy my content, please do hit that subscribe button. That helps the channel a lot. Lastly, leave me a comment. Let me know how you're doing. I would love to hear from you. Down in the description, you will find links to all these stories, as well as links to my subreddit, Twitter, and Facebook, and a page where you can submit your stories to me if you have any that you would like me to narrate. Um, think that's everything. So, all that said, I hope you all have a fantastic day and a fantastic week. See you on the next video, but until next time, sleep well.